one thing with about the four foot dish is uh, I don't want to put it on I don't want to do a concrete post in the ground because I don't really have a place where I get best line of sight so I was thinking of doing a, uh, something that would allow me to move the dish in different areas either in my yard or just bring it out and uh, show it take a camping bring it someplace uh, uh, set it up at, at, on a location that would be kind of like a portable or four foot dish but be, uh, be able to move so what I did is I got this pole here and before I put it in the cement what I've done is I've drilled a few holes through the bottom of it yeah, so I, uh, and I just took some coat hangers, cut them, and uh, ran them through there. The reason why I did that is when the dish stayed up in the concrete, it just won't spin in the concrete. And also the pole will stay rebarred into the, uh, into the bucket. Yeah. So it will fit in the bucket. Now, now when you have your bucket, you want it to be uh, lined up plump. Now, I understand this is going to be moved, so it's going to shim. But as I said, I want to do this in a portable way. Or a movable way, so yeah. So that will sit in there like that. The rods will be in there in the cement with rocks and stuff, and hopefully this will work. I'm not the biggest expert on this stuff, but hey, we'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Uh, the worst case scenario, the dish gets blown down in the wind and has a big dent in it and doesn't get your TV channels. So I put a couple posts on there, and I have these threaded rod pieces with a washer. And a bolt coming out through here so the idea I have about with this is I can um, throw uh, attach a weight to it or bury it in the ground uh, wherever I'm gonna be setting it so that way this will be full of cement there'll be a full bucket um, but also I can secure it so it's not gonna tip over and flop this is a uh, since I can't find a tripod or a non penetrating roof mount for this type dish this is what I'm gonna do All right, one thing I just want to show, this is the mast it came with. It's not the setup I'm going to use, but I'm just pointing it out just uh, in case you do decide to do it this way. Um, you got these brackets here. So what these do is they bolt in there like that, and you just drill into concrete and hold the post in. So that's the idea of what this is. It's kind of what, this is what it looks like on the, uh, on the website. But since I've done the bucket, I'm not going to bother with this. These pieces are this pole I don't need. All right, now I got the box, and I got these little bits and pieces that were all shrink wrapped. It was a fun time unshrink wrapping all these. This is part of the pole mount assembly. Here's the part of the, the pole mount part. There, it's a much smaller pole mount. The rod for your uh, how your dish is going to point up. So here's the instructions picture of the dish and it has all the points and parts and how it's to come assembled and it gives you a list of the screws bolts and rods and things uh, oh yeah it has a quantity too it has a quantity up here too what I'll need so don't lose any of those or you'll have to find them at a hardware store or something equivalent to do that so I'm gonna do try to assemble as much as I can inside and then bring it outside and inside the box is a bag of all the screws and the dish mount things and all that that you'll need washers and all that won't need any of these cement in thingies but uh there's all the pieces that assemble the dish assembly okay so i laid out all the, the bolts and everything for this so this is uh, here's the lmb holder which uh one of the last things to do once you do it into the dish and it has these things in the LMB will just go through there I haven't figured out where these go yet probably oh I think I know where these go these go inside the dish to keep uh, these these are to keep these out of a part of your dish you just kind of rubber hammer them into the, the, the sockets uh, and they're part of the I think this some part of the LMB holder um, 
some threaded rods. I haven't figured out where they go yet. And then there's these parts here. Uh, these are the thicker ones. There's some smaller ones, smaller bolts here. Some bolts here, lots of uh, screws and bolts. Uh, lots of washers. Two big washers, the threaded rod, and these, uh, these things here that I set to those threaded rods. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm just figuring out how to do all this stuff myself. So this part of the project will just, it's basically a puzzle where you try to figure out where, what goes where, and you gotta make it look like a satellite dish. All right, so I got this far on the pole mount. So I put this rod here like that, and attach it to this device, put a screw that reaches through there like that. And uh, so that's the first part of the pole mount. Now I hope I don't have to back anything up. Now I'm not sure where exactly the washers are going. I'm using the washers here. I figure that makes sense to have them there. I have a washer on the other side of this uh, for the amount of washers that I've gotten. So hopefully everything here is done right. So I'm going with these things here that look like this are going to go on like that. Or on the outside, it looks like on the picture I'm looking at online. I put the bolt on the outside because in case I want to get at it and work on it later, I don't want to put it on the inside because then it'll be a pain in the butt to loosen it off, take that off if I need to get it off. So uh, these go here, which is going to go to this bracket here, and uh, this is this thing here is going to face it down and it's going to attach the top of the pole mount. Kind of like right, so I pulled up the computer to have a few like reference pictures of this. So I'm at this point now. I might get to the point where I say. Um, oh gee, look what I've done, and I might have to go back uh, and say, up. So, so far I got this piece on here, uh, which will hold the top part of the dish, uh, the dish which is the uh, de-inclination angle, and it'll be there. And then I got this part on, which holds the bottom part, which will go about there. Now this brass thing, this is where I'm going to be like wondering, oh gee, what, look what I've done. I'm going to try to do it this way to start, and we'll see how it looks, and we'll put it together right through there. I moved and I put screwed this bracket here. This is the long shaft bracket and the de-inclination. Uh, there. So this bracket holds this round piece together. Uh, then there's this part here. And I just put the bolts gonna lose that there, but right there. And then just put that there at the front. But then I put the bolt at the back so that I can be tightened once the dish is on. And uh, yeah, the de-inclination is going to be here. It's going to be a little bit free play, but we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it on there. And then there's this okay, part. Okay, and my OG look what I've done. I believe I put this thing upside down, so I turned it the other way. We'll see how it fits on this way, and if it fits and everything pivots better. It's the way I had it, I had the other way, and I wasn't able to get, so I wouldn't be able to move the dish. Uh, so the pointing down, it makes more sense too, because then water won't pool. If this uh, the way I had it upside down, so this way water kind of runs down off of it, which would make more sense. So uh, uh, hopefully this will make it pivot to the further east and west where we had it upside down. It was basically I wouldn't be able to make it move uh, east or west and get the more further east or western satellites on the geostationary arc. Okay, at this point, it looks like it's this is the way it should go <laughs> on this part here, and then up here you got that in there. Now I gotta figure out the angle. All right, so I got the pole mount and I've tightened all the bolts and I figured out uh, with the washing lot, uh, nut ones, I just, uh, I put it on this side here. This rattles a little bit over here, but I figure when the dish sits, it will probably be okay and it'll, it'll allow it to do its movement that it needs to do. I don't wanna make it too tight because then this thing will get jammed in it. So. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do put the uh, actuator on um, before I put the dish on the on the uh, pole mount. Uh, that way I can take the pole mount and make sure I got the elevation and the D D D elevation angle set. Sometimes you need uh, at least with the big dish uh, to set the D elevation uh, D elevation <laughs> angle. Uh, it was easier just to have the dish part off before you got that angle. So I got the actuator right here, uh, and I've cut the wires for the actuator, which will run to the uh, the actuator uh, super power jack controller for it. So I'll just need to take this part off, 
I'm going to wire it up now and then leave it wired up so then at least now I can, uh, the idea of what I'm going to do is I can um, push the pole mount to its uh, highest point, uh, highest level point and then be able to adjust the elevation. Alright, so the, here's the inside of the actuator. Now when you put the actuator back together, always be careful of this thing here. This little piece of rubber here, you just want to run your wire through that. And then that way, you just, it just helps from water getting inside uh, these, uh, these wires and controls here on the actuator. And should be, a, if there's not a diagram, it's pretty easy to figure out. The thicker wire is the power wire, and the thinner wire is the read sensor wire. That's how I figured it out, figured it out on the big C-band dish. Um, if you can't figure out the positive and negative, um, just as long as you have power, I guess, uh, because uh, what generally happens with your motor switcher control is uh, if you got negative, it'll go in. If you got positive, it'll go the other way, uh, the other way around. You'll just basically switch the polar polarity. So I got the actuator go. wired up. I got the po uh, motor power and the sensor wires all in there. And uh, this one actually was easier to set up than the C-band dishes one. I hope this ain't gonna move too much because <laughs> I'm gonna leave the wires there. It was fun getting that th all that through there. And another thing I didn't anticipate, anticipate is this part here. I just had to take this off, bend it out, and then bend it back around that wire just to hold this wire right, into place. For the actuator, there's a little rubber ring. I just dropped that over, put it on there. There is the snake, and uh, optional whether you want to use the snake or not, or the cover. I call it the snake. Um, the only thing is, I, uh, I find is it doesn't allow you to get the full stroke of the uh, of the actuator, so beware of that. Uh, it does it's supposed to help a little bit of the moisture from getting in and weathering, so use that at your own risk. And uh, there's the wire there. So we're gonna go put this on the. All right, so I got my D inclination meter for 44. Uh, it says 4475. I did have uh, 4466. Uh, it just moves around a little bit, just with the wind or whatever. And I got the leveler next to it there, just so that I can um, uh, try to get the it pointed level so that I can get the de-inclination when the, the pole mount's at its peak, the highest so position. So for the pole mount, I got this other bracket here. It's exactly the same as this bracket. Same three holes, except you can put the actuator there or there. Um, and then I only have one bolt holding the uh, the pole mount to the dish with this bracket holding it there. Okay. So hopefully so that will work. The actuator attached. So we got the space here for it. Um, I might want to take the actuator in just a bit. We'll see how that works out once we got the dish in it. I just want to make sure it will spin. So I'm going to plug it in and make sure it works. So just make sure you got your washer spaced out so that everything. I'll just give it a test before I put the a dish up on it. Just make sure it's going to spin and do what it needs right. to do. So part of my test here was just to get the actuator uh, extended so that uh, I can just test it out, make sure it's working. It's all wired up inside here when we, we wired it up. So I just have the V box right here and I just uh, need to set that up. I have to find more wire. <laughs> run this into the house but uh, so yeah there's the actuator uh, there's the V box controller so the way I have that set up is I just have the, the two power cables and the two sensor cables I don't know if I have the sensor backwards because it started basically at 999 and it's just worked its way down I don't know if you can see in the sunlight but down to 200 When you see the actuator move, you'll see it kind of swing a little bit, but it's actually pivoting really good. For when you put the dish on it. I might need to move it back uh, so it goes a little bit more west, but I'm just using this e box right here and controlling it away. So, that way.
do that. Woo! Echo. All right. Next, we gotta add the poles for the LMB. Now, this will have the hole to hold on to it, and then there's this little hole through the pole where these poles attach from the side of the dish, which helps secure your LMB in place. Okay, for the next part, I put these brackets on. Now, the brackets just uh, you find, figure out which is left and right, and you attach them on, and then they'll just have this, this screw here. We'll fit in there, and then you get this one long screw goes through here and you want to tighten that up and then that will hold your LMB perfectly in the center and uh, this is all nice and pre-bent. Still have some Play-Doh which I use to run the bolts through the dish. Now the dish comes with these little plastic things that I just dropped. Uh, they come with these little plastic things they just fit right up in here. This one's not going to fit very good. You can hammer it in hammer it out a little bit and get it to fit properly. You just fit them in that with those holes. All right, another mistake I just uh, encountered, which I want you to avoid if you do this, is do you have this one bolt with a screwdriver? That's for your LMB holder. I accidentally took this one, which is just a uh, uh, bolt that you uh, tighten. This goes into where the LMB attaches to, or uh, the LMB bracket attaches to the dish. So this part here, uh, you wanna hook that bracket there and get a, uh, so the right, back like of the that. dish should look like that. I don't know if I'm using the right pieces, but that's a little excessively long, but whatever. Now comes the long process of just trying to um, get the dish so that you're inward. Got to uh, mix around with your, uh, your uh, angle, your true south, just to get that geostationary arc. There's a squirrel having a nut. Okay. So I put my elevation here, 42.28. So I'm going to lower it a little bit. It looks like the dish is just pointed a little bit too high. So we'll lower it down a bit. All right, so I got some signal here. I got uh, SES1, a press conference from uh, Washington. And so far, it's got it up there. I had to change the elevation on my dish right there. Um, trying to figure out what it, what to do here, because I know I was, <laughs> it seemed like it was pointing very much higher than it should be for an offset dish. So anyway, I tinkered around with that, got my first signal um, after tinkering around. I had to switch LMBs. I might switch back to the other LMB. I just wanted to try something because I kept not finding anything. Um, so it ended up just not being the uh, elevation angle that, uh, or maybe I just wasn't putting my level on the right spot of this pole mount. Okay, so here, I got this thing doing what it's supposed to be doing, doing what I never see on KU, Ben. Is getting about 15 dB. Can't really see that there. There is Vice President Pence, uh, 89. I'm Canadian. <laughs> anyway, uh, 78S. Can't really see the screen. The screen is not the greatest to see in the sunny days, but. And 89. Yeah. So I actually moved my actuator a bit just to loosen those bolts and moved it back a bit just to be able to get more, to go more east. Um, Set it and I'm getting really good signal. I'm getting cozy here. And I'm getting like 80, cozy the channel, 
and but 79% uh, signal and my, I get my 15, 14 dB, which I, this is a channel I've never been able to get on uh, KU Band. Well, actually I've gotten it before, but I always have a hard time getting that channel. Kind of have it set up here with the little LMB. The LMB looks tiny for that dish. There's my C-Band dish there. And uh, so I got there. I don't plan on leaving it here on the deck, but uh, just using it here on the deck for having all these wires here that I have set up um, for having it hooked up. I have the actuator mover there and my little dish receiver thing. So I've connected this DigiWave LMB that's a dual uh, input, like a linear and KU LMB. But I've been trying, messing around with the settings. I, I gotten everything, you know, with this LMB here, this is a Geosat Pro, just a little tiny LMB. That's what I had on there. And then I put this thing back on just to see, hey, I've lined up the dish. It's still, I'm getting a lot of bouncing of the signal. So I'm gonna switch back to this LMB uh, for now, cause I'm just finding this one. Could just be the, uh, the neck part of it that I can't get it, the skew properly adjusted. I'm getting signal, but not very much signal. So I don't know. I'm just finding out of the box. Well, not even out of the box. I just got this thing. It was cracked like this when I found it. Uh, somebody gave me a, one of my dishes and this came with it. And then I just put another LMB on it. This LMB actually works fine. It actually works better than this one I'm finding right now. I'm able to get better signal quality. Could be because of all the plastic, maybe it just looks nice. It is designed for a, a small circular KU band dish, so maybe that's part of the design. It's meant for a circular KU band dish and not necessarily a big dish like this. So yeah, I'm getting a lot better. I'm getting like 90% signal with the uh, KU band on this, on this one where I'm getting hardly any watchable with this one. So I'm gonna go with this. And uh, so that's my review of this. I've tried uh, universal set settings and standard frequency settings as I moved it around on different frequencies, but I'm just not having the luck with this. So we're gonna go with this. So I just fixed up my crack case with a little bit of electrical tape, just to, just to keep it from weather. It is pretty wide open in the bottom for uh, any moisture to leak out. It also has a little button here uh, for leak uh, any moisture to run out, which is fine. Are you looking for a satellite dish, a satellite receiver, or a actuator, or a satellite meter, or an LMB, or any satellite products for your free to air setup, go to tech2000.com. Look at their wide variety of merchandise of many free to air satellite products that will soothe your satellite needs. So here is how I wired it up. I put black at the end, red, black, red, black, red, green, white, for the, and green and white for the sensor. Just so I remember it's backed up properly. You can plug your receiver through one of these things too, but I don't normally do that. So my temporary rigging style, I got a couple buckets here, a couple of blocks of wood to brace it in. Uh, I've uh, bungee corded it to the fence in case there's a big gust of wind. It's not supposed to be any big winds uh, anytime soon, so that's good. Uh, I got the dish on there, I guess I can take the, this thing out, put it away with the dish stuff here to keep that in that bucket. So I got the little actuator here with the cord. It has a little bit of dirt on it from earlier. And a big dish here with the LMB with the tape taped up there. So since I can't move it because I'm not going to leave this the uh, the dish mover inside, I'm gonna I don't get the C103 uh, West the MBC Mux, so I'm gonna leave it there for today. I'm sure that's tight. So I was messing around with this. I haven't got the full arc. I'm getting it so I can get a few satellites, but now the whole trick of these things is to get like the full eastbound and westbound and when you move the and what I want to do with this thing is have it so I can move it around a little bit because the problem is my yard I have trees and different obstacles in the way for different satellites so kind of the idea of this is to move between a few satellites but not necessarily get all of them uh, so I got the actuator here and this little bitty super power jack actuator Doing the job here. You want to kind of keep that thing facing down. I could probably adjust that too. Actually, I probably could turn it now or loosen that and turn it up. Uh, actually, I have it the wrong way because I, I should have that down. Actually, I could do that right now. So I better do that. Make sure that it, the water runs 
off of that, out of, out of that. That's kind of the purpose of that whole rubber thingy there. So pretty much got it. Got some skew and things to change on it, but pretty much got it all uh, operating on KU band. So stay tuned to the next video uh, where we'll uh, attach K uh, C band LMB to it, and we will uh, see what channels we can get on C band with this thing. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.